Hi, welcome back to my class in e statistics. Today we will complete our last example, the ungrouped data we had in the last lesson. And today we will represent the data graphically. We will represent the ungrouped data graphically using vertical bar graph, horizontal bar graph, pie chart, and the OG guide. We recall the given data last in last time in the last lesson. The, this is the partial presentation of data we had last time in frequency table. The scores are 15, 17, 18, 20, 21, 25. And the second column, the second column shows the corresponding frequencies of the scores. And the third column is for cumulative frequency or the running sum of the frequencies. The sum of the frequencies is the sample size. And our sample size denoted by N is 22. We start with the vertical bar graph. To draw the vertical bar graph, we write the frequencies in the vertical axis. The vertical axis is denoted by F for frequencies. And for the vertical axis, I chose to use the one unit intervals. Your decision on what intervals to use for the vertical axis depends on the lowest and the highest frequencies. Since the lowest frequency is 2 and the highest frequency is 5, I use a one unit interval for the vertical axis. Again, for the vertical bar graph, you write the frequency in the vertical axis and you write the scores that appear as they appear in your frequency table. You write these scores in order in the horizontal axis denoted by X which also denotes the scores. And the scores X from 15 to down to 25 are equally spaced in the horizontal axis. We now draw the vertical bar graph. The frequency of 15 is 2. From 15, we construct a vertical bar, a vertical rectangle, a rectangle whose height corresponds to, it, to the frequency of 15. And we write 15 at the center of the lower base of the rectangle. This is a vertical bar graph whose height is 2 corresponding to the frequency of 15. You see that 15 is at the midpoint of the lower base of the rectangle. And the height of this rectangle or vertical bar is 2 which is the frequency of 15. Next, we draw the vertical bar or re vertical rectangle for the square 15. Uh, sorry, 17. 17 has a frequency of 4. From 17, we construct a vertical bar whose frequency, whose height is 4. The frequency of 15. And we make sure that 15 is at the midpoint of the lower base. The height of this rectangle or vertical bar is 4 that corresponds to the frequency of 17. 17 should be at the midpoint of the lower base. Next, for 18, 18 has a frequency of 5. So from 18, with 18 at the midpoint of the lower base of the rectangle, we construct a rectangle whose height is 5 corresponding to the frequency of 18. Now the spaces, there are spaces between 
vertical bars or between rectangles and the spaces should be also equal. For 20, the frequency of 20 is 3. And this is 1, 2, 3. We construct a rectangle. We construct a rectangle whose height is 3 units that corresponds to the score of 20. 20 should be at the midpoint of the lower base of the rectangle. For 21, frequency is 5. Again, 21 should be at the midpoint of the lower base of the rectangle. And for 21, the height of the, re the rectangle is 5. Same as the height of the score of 18 because 18 and 21 have the same frequency, highest frequency of 5. So the tallest rectangles we find for 18 and 21. And for the last score of 25, its frequency is 3. From 25, we construct a vertical bar whose height is 3 units corresponding to the frequency of 25. 3 units, the same as the height of this rectangle for 20 because 20 has also frequency of 3. Twenty-five should be at the midpoint of the lower base of the rectangle. In the vertical and the height of this uh, vertical bar for twenty-five is three units because the frequency of twenty-five is three. Again, when you construct the vertical bar graph, you write the frequency in the vertical axis and you select the appropriate interval scale for the vertical axis depending on the lowest and the highest frequencies. For this example, the, the lowest is 2 and the highest frequency is 5. So I use a one unit interval for the vertical axis and you write the scores in order as they appear in the frequency table in the horizontal axis and the scores are equally spaced. The rectangles should also be equally spaced. There are spaces between vertical bars and they are equally spaced. Now we construct the horizontal bar graph. For the horizontal bar graph, we now write the frequency in the horizontal axis. And we write the scores in the vertical axis from the lowest 15 in order as they appear in the frequency table for ungrouped data. Again, I use a one unit intervals for the horizontal axis denoted by F for frequencies because the lowest and the highest frequencies are 2 and 5 respectively. So it's easier, easier to use a one unit interval for the horizontal axis or F axis. Now we start with 15, the frequency of 15 from this frequency distribution table is 2. From 15 we write, we draw a horizontal bar, a rectangle whose length is 2 units. The length of the rectangle is 2 units corresponding to the frequency of 15. This is 1 and 2. Again, you find the midpoint at this. Uh, we find 15 at the midpoint of the side of the horizontal bar or rectangle. The length of the rectangle for 15 is 2 corresponding to units corresponding to the frequency of 15. You draw the horizontal bar or rectangle for 17. The frequency of 17 is 4. Hence, from 17, we draw a horizontal bar or rectangle whose length is 4 units. This is 1, 2, 3, 4.
This is the horizontal bar or rectangle for the score of 17. 17 is at the midpoint of this side of the rectangular horizontal bar or rectangular bar. And the length of this horizontal bar is 4 units corresponding to the frequency of 17. Next for 18, frequency of 18 is 5. From 18 we draw a horizontal bar whose length is 5 units. And this should be the longest horizontal bar or rectangular bar because 18 has the highest frequency of 5. So the rectangular bar for 18 has the highest greatest length of 5 units corresponding to the frequency of 18. Now you can see that there are spaces between horizontal bars or rectangular bars. And then these uh, horizontal bars or rectangular bars are equally spaced. For 20, the frequency of 20 is 3. We draw a horizontal bar whose length is 3 units from 20. And for 21, the frequency of 21 is 5. So the rectangular bar or horizontal bar for 21 is as long as the horizontal bar or rectangular bar for 18 with the same frequency of 5. We draw a horizontal bar from 21 with the length of 5 units. And finally, we draw the horizontal bar or rectangular bar for 25. The frequency of 25 is 3. Thus, the horizontal bar or rectangular bar for 25 is as long as the bar, horizontal bar for 20. Because 20 and 25 have the same frequency of 3. So, from 25, we draw a horizontal bar with length of 3 units. And this is the completed horizontal bar graph that represents the data graphically. Again, if you want to draw a horizontal bar graph, you write the frequency in the horizontal axis and you select the appropriate interval scale for the horizontal axis based on the lowest and the highest frequencies. And you write the scores in the, vertically, in the vertical axis in the order that they appear in, in the frequency distribution table from the lowest to the highest equally spaced in the vertical axis. If you want to draw the vertical bar graph, you write the frequency in the vertical axis and you select the appropriate interval scale for the vertical axis depending on the, the lowest and the highest frequencies in the uh, frequencies of the scores. And you write the scores from the lowest to the highest in the order that they appear in the frequency distribution table in the horizontal axis, equal space in the horizontal axis. For the vertical bar graph, the, the, height, the heights of the vertical bars correspond to the frequencies of the scores. For the horizontal axis, the, the length of the horizontal bar corresponds to the frequency of the scores. And uh, the score with the score with the highest frequency will have the tallest vertical bar and it will have the the score with the highest frequency will have the the longest horizontal bar. Now we draw the the pie chart the pie chart is a circular presentation of data in which we divide a pie or a circle in among the scores 
among the data points in the setup data. And we associate or we assign a, an angular measurement for each of the score. For each of 15, 20, 18, 20, 21, and 25, we assign a, an angular measure using this formula. Frequency divided by sample size multiplied by 360. The multiplier factor here is 360 because one circle makes one revolution and one revolution is equal to 360 degrees. And it is 360 degrees that we will divide among these scores from 15 to 25 by associating an angular measure for each of these scores. Now we compute the angular measure that we will assign to 15. The frequency of 15 is 2 and we divide 2 by the sample size 22 and multiply by 360. And you may compute that using your calculator. In your calculator, you divide the frequency of 15 to 2 divided by the sample size n is 22 and multiply by 360 degrees. And you round off your answer to two decimal places. The digit, the answer is 332.7272. The decimal number 72 is repeated without end. So the answer is a repeating, non-terminating decimal number. And we round off this answer in your calculator to two decimal places which means that the third digit from the decimal point is to be rounded off. And from your calculator, the third digit from the decimal point is 7. Since 7 is more than 5, we add 1 to the preceding digit, the digit preceding 7, the number to be rounded off. And the digit preceding digit is 2. We add 1 to 2. And the answer to two decimal places is 32.73 degrees. Now we assign, we compute the angular measure, we assign to 17, we divide the frequency of 17 for by the sample size n which is 22 and we multiply the quotient by 360. Again we divide 4 frequency, we divide by the sample size n which is 22. and we multiply the quotient by 360 degrees. And the answer is 65.4545, the decimal numbers. 45 again is repeated without end. So this answer in your calculator is a repeating, non-terminating decimal number. But we round it off to two decimal places. The, the third digit from the decimal point is to be rounded off and the third digit from the decimal point is 4. Since 4 is less than 5, we simply drop 4 and all the digits to its right and we do not add 1 to the preceding digit, 5. Thus, the final answer to two decimal places is 65.45 degrees. We compute the, the angular measure we associate to score of 18. The frequency of 18 is 5 and we divide the frequency of 5 by the sample size n of 22. 5 divided by 22 multiplied by 360. We compute that. 5 divided by 22 multiplied by 360 and you should get 81.8181 the decimal number 81 is repeated without end again this answer is in your calculator is a non terminating repeating decimal number and we round it off to two decimal places the third digit from the decimal point is to be rounded off 
and that digit is 8. And since 8 is more than 5, we add 1 to the digit preceding 8, which is 1. So the final answer to two decimal places is 81.82. We calculate now the angle we associate with score of 18 by dividing its frequency of 3 by the sample size n of 22 and multiplying the quotient by 360 degrees. 3 divided by n, 22, multiplied by 360 degrees. We compute 3 divided by 22 multiplied by 360 and you should get 49.090909 the decimal digits or decimal number 09 is repeated without end but we give the final answer to two decimal places we round off the third digit from the decimal point and the third, third digit from the decimal point is zero it's less than 5, so we simply drop 0 and all the digits to its right. And the final answer to two decimal places is 49.09 degrees. For the score of 21, its frequency is 5, which is the same frequency of 18. Hence, the angular measure associated with 18 is the same. Angular measure we associate with 21. Since 18 and 21 have the same frequency of 5, the angular measure we assign to 21 is the same as the angular measure we assign to 18 with the same frequency of 5 as 21. And that angular measure is 81.82 degrees. The same with 25. The score 25 has a frequency of 3, which is the same frequency of 20, which means that the angular measures we assign to 20 and 25 are equal and the same angles. The angular measure associated with 20, as we computed, is 49.09 degrees, and we assign the same angular measure for 25 because 25 has the same frequency 3 as 20. So the angular measure we assign to 25 is 49.09 degrees. To check if you have the correct answers, you add all these angular measures and when you round off your answer to whole number, the the rounded off answer in whole number should be exactly 360 degrees. We add summation of the angles and round it off to whole number, see if you will get exactly 360 degrees. We have 32.73. plus 81.82 plus 49.09 plus another 81.82 plus another 49.09 And the sum is exactly 360 degrees. If you get a 360 degrees, degrees plus a decimal number, round it off the whole number. And you should get 360 degrees. If you get 361 degrees, then there should be something wrong. Uh, one of your answers in your calculation should be wrong. But here, the summation of the measure angular measures is exactly 360 degrees. Now we will divide this pi or circle with 360 degrees among these scores. 
according to their angular measurements. And I will start with the highest angular measure of 81.82 degrees. That's uh, less than 90 degrees. One fourth of the circle has an angular measure of 90 degrees. But this is only 81.82 degrees, less than 90 degrees. So I have indicated that the measure of this angle between this line and this line is uh, 81.82 degrees and I have to indicate that because this angle this angle is only an approximation and this part of the pie chart with this angular measure is for the score of 18 and I will approximate another 81.82 degrees for the score of 21. So this part of the the pie the pie or the circle with angular measure of 81.82 is the share of the score x equals 21. Next is 65.45 degrees. You may start with any of the angular measure, approximate them, but I chose to start with from the from the highest angular measure. And next next is next highest is 65.45 degrees. I will approximate This angular measure is approximately 65.45 degrees and it's for the score of 17. Now the remaining, this remaining part of the pi or the circle we have to divide among 32.73 degrees and 249.09 degrees. I will start with 49.09 degrees. I have approximated two 49.09 degrees. The first 49.09 degrees is for the score of 20 and the second 49.09 degrees is for 25. The first is for 20 and the second 49.09 degrees is for 25. And the remaining part of the the pi or circle with angular measure of 32.73 degrees is for the score of 50. This is the, the graphical presentation of this data in using pie chart or pie graph. Now we draw the ogive or ogive is the in constructing the ogive we use the cumulative frequency instead of frequency and in drawing the ogive or ogive we write the cumulative frequency in the vertical axis and uh, i selected the 
a five unit intervals for the vertical axis or commutative frequency axis since the the lowest frequency is 2 and the highest frequency is 22 so I used a five unit intervals for the vertical axis but the scores denoted by X are written in this order as they appear in the frequency table in the horizontal axis. The scores are written in the horizontal axis as they appear in the frequency table from the lowest down to the highest. And the scores are equally spaced in the horizontal axis. For 15, the cumulative frequency of 15 is 2. So we plot that point is 4, 15, and cumulative frequency 2. The score is 15, cumulative frequency is 2. This is 5 units. I approximated 2 units. The cumulative frequency for 15. Next, the cumulative frequency of 17 is 4. So we plot that point 17, 4. 17 is the score and 4 is the cumulative frequency of 17. Eighteen. The cumulative frequency of 18 is 5. Uh, sorry. The cumulative frequency of 17 is 6, not 4. Cumulative frequency of 17 is 6, so we plot the point 17, 6. This is 17 and 6. Now, cumulative frequency of 18 is 11. We plot the point 18 and 11. Next, cumulative frequency of 20 is 14. We plot the point 20 and 14. And the cumulative frequency of 21 is 19. And the cumulative frequency of the last score 25 is 22. After you plot the points, you connect these points with, with a smooth curve. The cumulative frequency curve or ogive or ogive is, a, is an increasing curve. It's always an increasing curve. Because the, the cumulative frequency of the scores is increasing. If, uh, if your cumulative frequency is perfect, it should do, look like this. This is how a perfect cumulative frequency would look like, more or less, if your graph is accurate. But you can do all these graphs using, using Excel, just encode your your data, the score, the frequency, and cumulative frequency in Excel, and choose the, the graph you want to draw. You have many options or choices of graph you want to use to represent your data graphically, and you only have to explore your Excel. And this ends our lesson for today on graphical presentation of data.